Hey everybody, it's Tyler with Gaia Force Gaming, and I am here with Will, who recently came, was it second place at a Treasure Cup Regionals? Uh, Not Treasure Cup yeah. Regionals, sorry. Yeah, second place at the Top Cut Regionals on the on the, this past Sunday. Yep, yeah, and this is for the One Piece card game, which, sorry I haven't been putting out a ton of content on One Piece since set two drop, since uh, Digimon Nats, we've been focusing on Digimon, but I am excited to get a little insight on the new meta, and uh, I guess without further ado, we'll take it away, talk about your deck, and uh, the event, and what you liked, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like Tyler said, it's Will, William, King Kagami, if you see me in Discord, or randomly in Twitch, is uh, Tuoli, a combination of my two dogs' names. Uh, but we had the great opportunity to play in at the top cut regional we decided to play strawbeard which is kind of like turned into the uh boogeyman uh, of the format some could say uh it topped both events in a, a large quantity seven out of the top 16 were edward newgate or uh, or whitebeard for those one piece fans his effect is uh, at the end of every turn you take a life and add it to your hand and you do get to start at six life for this leader every other leader in the game starts at five and if they're a dual colored leader it starts at four so it's a little bit different but thematically you take a life every turn until you're at zero and you can't take any more life um played nine rounds went x and one played against some amazing people uh throughout the in, uh, entire event my actually first round matchup was against uh and if i'm like mispronouncing his discord name it's shane the guy who won on saturday he was the my very first pair, and I was like, oh man, why me? What, what What's today going to hold? But we got to play the mirror match, and that was extremely fun. Very cool. So yeah, like you said, uh, Whitebeard, Edward Newgate is a super aggressive leader from set two. Uh, it does, you do take a life every turn, but it does add to your hand, as well as in One Piece, uh, your life, just for if you're watching this and you're not familiar with One Piece, your life is a little less, uh, I guess we call it fragile, than other card games because you have to get above their leader's uh, power in order to take that life. And there's a lot of ways to stop that in One Piece with the counter mechanics. Um, so I guess without further ado, let's talk about your deck list. Uh, and then we can go into your matchups and like what you think the strengths and weaknesses of this deck are. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the leader. So we'll start with the one drops um in the deck so starting off it's part of the straw hat engine itself we're playing four of the one drop namis uh on play you look at the top five and you can add any card with the straw hat crew type in it so we start with four of those uh the next one drop we play is otama i'll say during the entire day it never came up as the its ability to minus 2k something I strictly used it as a 2k counter the entire time uh, to pitch from hand to prevent attacks on my leader. And then continuing with the theme of 2k counters and one drops, we played Machina. Um, I know people like the cheeky play of like you have Nami on board and then you can play Machina and get an extra swing. It never came up and I just pitched this card. So. I want to tinker with the idea of turning this into another 2k uh, like straw hat for more searchability and just having more hits in the deck because it, it never came up to play and actually make nami a swing continuing to go into the 2ks we played four sanjis with the sanjis it's a 2k counter never play it his effect does let you add a card from life to hand and attach to rested dawn however uh, since I'm already adding life, I don't want to get myself low any further. Then we played the Monkey D. Luffy, another 2k counter. Uh, some people will play this at 4. I decided to play this at 2 to play a different 2k counter, which we'll see in a little bit. And then 3 Vistas. Um, there were some lists I saw from the day before that cut the Vista and, and a lot of the playtesting I did. This card comes up, but not often enough where you're playing it. A lot of times you're pitching it because the name of this, like the game for this deck is like, how can I stay alive as much as possible? Especially since you're on a unique timer once you hit zero, you want to have as much counter power in your hand. The 2K counter 
where I split was I decided to play two Josus. It's not searchable. However, if you attach a Dawn, it does have Rush. So I wanted just an extra cheeky swing. It also never came up, so I could see what going back to four of these. The one time I had it in hand, I also had a Ace for Rush. And I would have got the same swing amount in. So I was just like, oh, we'll just play the Ace. So it just always stayed in my hand. We then now get to like where this deck really shines and starts creating pressure is by dropping these four drop 6k vanillas. So play four Monkey D. Luffy and four Frankie. These, this deck really likes going second in this game. You have uh, Dawn progression where if you go first, you start with one. If you go second, you start with two. And then you're adding two every turn till you hit 10. So ideally you're going second and you're dropping this on your turn two and really establishing a presence that they have to answer. Otherwise you're swinging for six twice every turn. Then we have four King Do. It's a five drop vanilla 7K. A lot of times this ends up getting used as a counter, but there's actually some really niche scenarios where I found it better to drop him than the next five drop, which is Luffy. Uh, this is the starter deck Luffy. It's a rush card, meaning the moment it's played, it can swing. And if you attach two Dawn, it is unblockable. We're then playing three Ace. It's a seven drop 7k with Rush if your leader is Whitebeard, so it's important. You're playing Edward Newgate for the Rush ability, and then it gives two of your characters minus 3k. So a lot of times this can come down and swing face, or it can help you control the board by lowering the power of some of your opponent's characters and, and making some really important swings. And then the kind of like boss monster, the, the big the big card of the deck, Edward Newgate himself, he's a nine drop. When you see this card, and if you can play it on on tempo and not losing aggression, you almost feel like you're in control of the entire game from that point dropping a second one it almost feels like you're in an unlosable position what happens is on play one of your leaders him will gain 2k until the start of your next turn so he's going to be 8k on your opponent's turn and you stop taking life so the reason strawbeards or new gates in general want to go second is because you're adding a life every turn by the time you hit 10 dawn he can still have two life and start playing this and buying yourself extra turns because your opponent's now forced to swing into you for you to take that life. And then the last card that we play is Radical Beam. We play it as four. If you have more than two life, it's just a 2k counter, but the moment you're at two or less, it's a 4k counter for one. So since your goal is to be at that two or less, and you get there naturally, this card is quite great to help protect from giant swings. A lot of times when you're going second, on your 10 Dawn turn, when you get to first play this, you'll be at eight. You leave a Dawn up for this, so you can guard all the way up to 12, just through one Dawn. Very and cool. Then, oh, that's, sorry, that, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, there's, there's nothing super crazy for, or different from some of the other lists that topped with this. I think the biggest difference from mine and those was just trying the Jozu out. The guy who got first place had a really cool, like, had more white beard cards in there. But in terms of like the traditional straw beard, that was the biggest difference I chose to take. And it really didn't come up. So I, I don't think it's a make or break card. It's if you don't have the four tournament Luffy's, you just can play two Jozu's or really any other 2K counter at that point. All right. All right. Is there anything like going into a new event? that you might change based on how the meta's developed or how your performance was? Or do you think this list is the solid list you're going with? The The biggest thing I would change, I'd probably cut the Machinos um, to play either Brooks or Usopp's. I don't think they necessarily come up in terms of playability. You could maybe make the argument for Usopp uh, because if Black starts becoming a little more prominent they do start playing some more option cards to like kind mm -hmm. of draw um 
or not option cards, that's a, a Digimon term, event cards, or even the purple, but it, it's not even something worth, like, s sitting on the board. You really just want as much counter power at hand at any given point to live through most of the swings, and it would just be searchable, where this one's not. Um, but outside of that, I really wouldn't change anything else. There's, like, some hard staples in here, like playing the four Nami and the four Rush Luffy. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. All right, so what what did your matchups look like for the day? Uh, what what decks do you feel like this struggles against? What decks do you feel like it excels against? Yeah, so um, started the day off with a mirror match, uh, Strawbeard into Strawbeard. On that one, it's a very interesting dynamic, and I'm still undecided if going first is actually better in the mirror, because I think there's, it's really valuable to attach three Dawn to your leader on turn two, and swinging 9k and either putting that player going second on the same clock as you of taking life or um forcing them to counter out so they can like be at the two life on their 10 dawn turn um and then i played three kinemon in total i know people probably don't think kinemon is a rough matchup i felt like that was personally the matchup I struggled the most into the entire day was Kinemon, all three matches. Everyone came down to like the, the absolute final turn. And if I didn't math correctly on my swings, I'm losing on the crackback instantaneously. Because there's a lot of like weird decisions about clearing their Odin or not. I played Zoro. That matchup is really determined by who sees Edward Newgate first. If I got to drop my Edward Newgate, it is so hard for Zoro to overcome the Dawn investment to reach 8k to get effective swings in. And then I played two smokers. Uh, when playing black, you want you want to drop Nami to see more cards, but if you know you're playing against smoker, it's a dead card in your hand. You really can't afford to play it because it allows smoker to swing 7k into you every turn, which is actually quite huge because it's a one dawn investment for them and now it's eating into your 2k counters instead of being able to pitch 1k's and, and not taking life so in that matchup you just kind of have to say nami's just a 1k counter and start playing the draw from the top of my deck and kind of hope i see the pieces i need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what and was then, uh your loss to for the day yeah my loss was actually to a luffy um he finished six if, if I'm not mistaken it, and he finished fifth the day before as well. So really great player, su super nice. It came down to our final turn. Uh, in this game with Dawn, uh, your resource for being able to play cards and even attach them to increase the attack, I had myth missed math my swing, and I didn't attach my Dawn as efficiently as I could. And then he got uh, one too many cards to be able to counter out of my final swings. Uh, so it was a really great learning opportunity. It was really awesome to play against. I still think Luffy's like a super good deck as well. Um, and it was cool to see it like up there. So but that was a fun match. But that was my one loss was Luffy. Very, very cool. I do love that Luffy is... I, I feel like Luffy is just such a generically good leader. Like it has such a uh, like an all-encompassing good leader ability. I don't think uh, it's going to fall off too harshly as long as you're a good player. No, I, I agree, and, and what makes like Edward Newgate popular and, and interesting is the fact that he's 6k. Mm -hmm. He's the only leader in the game that's 6k, so he automatically gets a plus 1k buff over every leader. With Luffy, his ability to attach a Dawn, a rested Dawn underneath, lets him consistently be at 6k to swing every turn without messing up his curve plays, because he can just attach and still swing for 6, where other leaders... If they tap out fully in dawn, they don't get to swing at Edward Newgate because of the the difference in mm -hmm. attack. Yeah, yeah, and that's what made I felt Luffy really strong in the first set was he felt like a six k leader for for <laughs> most of it. And now yeah. now he could go toe to toe with Whitebeard, which is really cool. Uh, how do you uh, how do you feel about the meta with OP two and uh, just the the state of the game in general right now? Yeah, I, I think it's in a really cool spot, especially being so early. Um, there's definitely some bad matchups for certain archetypes and some really good ones for others. Um, 
this definitely is one of the more dominant archetypes in the game this like specific version of the deck and i do think the results like uh, represent that as well but i i still think it's it's healthy enough where you don't feel like you can't play your there are some leaders that are probably unplayable i would say i, I wouldn't say every leader is made equal but there are some leaders with cool abilities that are still absolutely playable and really don't put you out of the game right um, we saw a doflamingo top there was a ivankov in the top a different top 16 kidamon kid smoker even a zephyr and a magellan like there's so many different leaders that that can play a lot of it can come down just to like a the pilot and understanding what your opponent's deck is doing versus what you're trying to do and how to accelerate your own game plan yeah i mean i'm super excited for uh just one piece in general like i said i haven't had a lot of time to really sink my teeth into it but man just playing casually has been a lot of fun and i i need to get my hands on some op2 product um, yeah and, uh, no uh uh hopefully uh there's more product on the the horizon uh because you know that can be a, a barrier to entry for a lot of people is just getting their hands on product uh but the game you know is if you're okay without the alternate arts can be very uh still very like cost effective compared to some other card games i think altogether like in in this this is probably like 10 to 20 and this is sitting at about 10 to 20 and then everything else in here is less than five dollars maybe yeah, minus this yeah promo. i think outside of alt arts if you have a red starter deck and the tournament promo luffy's you're probably looking at like less than a hundred dollar investment yeah yeah rough between 100 150 and again i don't even think this is necessary i never played it i know there's people like oh i played yeah, it, it could be any going. straw hat 2k counter right any straw hat 2k counter so that Usopp. could be like you said Usopp's or brooks or yeah brooks a little like more that. expensive so if you're going the budget route you just play well i mean if you got the starters you got them right oh that's true so anyway i really do appreciate you coming on like i said i haven't been able to keep up with the game super well so having someone with a a second place under their belt is super <laughs> super nice to just get a little uh, peek at the meta no yeah absolutely and I'd, I'd say a big part of it's just like and maybe i'm wrong uh but i feel like a good part of it is just some days like you just run really hot you see all the pieces that you need to to see and you don't get punished for aggressive plays that you normally may get punished for right and that mm -hmm. kind of is just like a culmination of those things leads to this like oh man i was able to top there's a lot of skill involved i, I don't want to take away from anyone's tops or even my own top but i do think there's that that like 30 40 percent of like it was just your day to do extremely well and see what you need to see and not get punished for those like 50 50 plays where if it doesn't go your way you just end up losing that match um yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel the same way about almost every type of competitive gaming in general. Uh, like, I, I, I really like, there's, I don't remember the exact phrase or a quote, but there's there's a quote about getting lucky, but it's like, you know, when opportunity knocks, you still have to be ready to open the door. So it, it's not just about getting right, like getting lucky per se, or seeing those opportunities, but putting yourself in a position where you're ready to seize them as well. No, absolutely. Um and it's really cool great community everyone i i played against was extremely friendly and polite so anyone who's like trying to play and you know don't have the locals these online uh tournaments and and locals that different communities host such as guy force gaming are, are great places to play and meet really cool people uh at any given time yeah thank you for the plug we are going to try and have more one piece events uh once we get uh, just like a, a day that works good for everyone. So that's going to be cool. But there are, yeah, there are definitely uh, resources online to play online. And uh, I guess without further ado, Will, you have anyone you want to shout out before we wrap up? Anything you want to say? Any final words? Yeah. Um, one, thank you for the opportunity to come on and, and kind of like talk about the deck and the choices. And then two, just want to 
shout out uh, Team Geeked Out. It's the local gaming store uh, that I get to play under and, and play my locals at on a weekly basis. So huge shout out to them uh, for having a community and, and giving us a place to play and, and play test and practice on a weekly basis as well. So yeah, that's that's really about it. And again, thank you for the opportunity to come on here. Of course. Thank you for coming on and sharing you know, your little bit of insight and uh, expertise with this new deck and this new meta. And uh, it was a regional, so good luck at Nats. I'm excited to see, you know, where we'll be when that drops later in the year. Oh, yeah. It'll be... If it's if it's like Digimon, right? You look at the first two sets compared to, like, what? It was, like, set six or set seven when Nats yeah, it was, was for Yeah, it was, like, the first EX set for the first Nats, <laughs> so... Yeah, a whole different card game at that point. Sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, thank you so much for coming on here, Will. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and put in the comments if you want to see a little bit more One Piece content. We do have some stuff at GFG cooking up. Uh, we are thinking about going heavy into some One Piece content and maybe a separate channel. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and, yeah, without further ado, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.